There's joy for the morning. O sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens. Lay down your shame. Hello, YouTube land. Uh, this is Jeremy coming to you once again, and what a week it has been. Um, we're still in this uh, this cycle of social distancing. Um, I want to continue to do these videos. I'm going to try to post one each Wednesday um, as we're taking this time apart. Uh, this is this video is going to be more geared towards the youth. Um, of course, each Wednesday evening we'll get together and have our youth meetings, and that's been a big part of what we've been missing here lately. Um, so I just want to uh, encourage our youth and try to bring a word to you guys today. I'm sure there'll be others tuning in as well, which is which is good. Um, but this will be more geared towards towards the youth of Green Village and just trying to encourage you guys. Um, you know, we're thinking a lot about you and uh, just what you might be feeling through all of this, like some of the struggles that you're probably having and um, just the difficulty of, of the separation and um, and also just wondering, you know, what in the world is going on? You know, it's uh, it's hard to go through something like this and not think out scenarios and start to think about, you know, how long is this going to be and uh, what will be the final outcome? And, you know, there's so much information that we have today. Um, you know, a lot of people call it the information age. And uh, we certainly do live in that. It's, it's, a, it's a unique time that we live in where we have so much information. Um, today, what I want to challenge you in is to think about the source of that information. Um, you know, what, what source do you go to to receive your information? And you guys know me and how much I love technology. That's why I'm so excited about the opportunity to be on YouTube and uh Perhaps there's a little bit of sarcasm in that statement. Um, but no, I talk about it all the time, you know, the phones and, and the idea that we all carry around these computers in our pockets. And, uh, you know, basically, you know, we're, we're just inundated, like just covered with information nonstop. I can go on here and, and find like six news stories within six seconds. And each one of those news stories has a different perspective or a different angle at which they're approaching the story and what we might be hearing. And, you know, that can lead us uh, down a really dark and difficult road. You know, where we're trying to consume so much information that we're not really even considering the source. We don't know if it's necessarily true or if it's an opinion or if it's a suggestion. And um, what I want to encourage you in today is, you know, where do you go for the correct information? And I think, uh, I think without a doubt, you'll know what I'm going to suggest next. I want to, I want to turn with you guys, if you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me to the, the book of Hebrews, and consider what the Word of God says about just a few matters, and then I'll challenge you um, as, as I'm done reading. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, 
scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want to skip down to chapter 13 in Hebrews and pick up there in uh, verse 5 and uh, just hear the words here. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. You guys pray with me. Father, I thank you for your word and I just, I pray that Uh, Just today's session would be an encouragement to everyone that hears it. God, that we would consider the source of our information. And Lord, that we would just direct our eyes to you. Help help us to focus on uh, your word and and not all these voices around us um, that that really a lot of times don't carry truth. Lord, they, they, they aren't based on truth. And Lord, we know that you have given us the truth through your word. And so, God, I pray that you'd help us to to find that today and to be seeking that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I guess uh, for most of you guys that are out there that are familiar with with a little bit of me and my history, um, you know that I love Volkswagens. I grew up uh, working on Volkswagens. My first car was a Volkswagen Beetle, um, a 1972 Beetle that needed a complete restoration. So... Uh, I was about 15 years old. I purchased that car for $50. Um, pretty amazing to think about. Uh, but anyhow, that that launched me into this uh, into this love of Volkswagens. It's sort of a passion of mine to find an old Volkswagen, maybe drag it out of a field or a barn, and to work on it, to restore it, and just kind of like bring it back to life. That's something that I, I really enjoy doing. Um, but that's not something that didn't come without some work or without some study or without uh, figuring out, you know, how, how do you work on these old things? Where do you start? I didn't just all of a sudden become a mechanic overnight. Um, it's something that I had to put some time into. And then it's also something that, you know, we, we go to a source, we go to a place to try to figure out what's going on with these things. I have a few, um, one of my original Volkswagen manuals was this one. And this is, this is like an old classic. Anybody that's around Volkswagens kind of knows this one. It's called how to keep your Volkswagen alive. Now, the subtitle there, I'll let you guys read that. Yeah, a a step-by-step for procedures uh, for the complete idiot. So this came in very handy for me, especially, you can see it's well used, got a little taped up over the years, but this was a great manual that I used to help me, you know, in in the beginning stages of working on Volkswagen. Here's another one that's more recent. This one's a more detailed one. This one relates just to the transporter, which would be like the Volkswagen bus, you know, so it's very specific. A lot more detail, a lot more information in that type of a manual. It can be a little overwhelming, right? These are some pretty large manuals that discuss a lot of the mechanical procedures. Um, But you know, there's another manual that is actually one that I really like that's, that's really specific and it's really simple. And that's this manual. Now this would be if, if you're so fortunate to have it still original to the cars, this is actually from 1958. So this is an old one that's one of, one of the manuals that goes with one of my vehicles. And it's, it's very basic, but it's also very pinpointed because this is the instruction manual. This is what came with the vehicle. It explains maintenance and all those different things. Um, really, uh, it simplifies the process. It's like I'm going a little bit more directly to the source. And, you know, I kind of want to get back to that because um, – I think what's going on right now is we're receiving a lot of information from a lot of places that we don't necessarily need to be seen or receiving. Um, And it leads us to a place of fear. Um, And I I would suggest to you that the biggest fear that we have is the fear of the unknown. It's the fear of the unknown. It doesn't matter what article you read, what news feed, uh, where where you're getting your information from. They don't know all of the end results. They don't know what's going to happen. How is this going to play out in the end? And what's interesting to to think about is, you know, 
I talked about going to the Word of God today, and you know, for me, this is the original source. This this book is not only full of truth, but it is full of the rest of the story. So this can not only bring us uh, a sense of of confidence um, and a, and a, and to a place of trust, and, and and we read story and story again of God's faithfulness and and, and places that we can go to that, that just bring us encouragement, but it also gives us the rest of the story. Like we know that God is in control. Um, did you hear what he said there in verse seven? This is chapter 13 of Hebrews. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. You know, the outcome of the way of, way of life of, of faithful people, you think about that. Um, what do you see in, in the quality of their lives? For me, when I think about uh, the the people that have influenced in my life, the, the men of faith and the men and women who 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 have trusted God and and different things in that heritage that I have in growing up, those are people of pa- of peace. Th- those are people who have a true content heart, and that is because their source is the Word of God. Their strength is coming from God alone. And I want to encourage you, especially young people, you know, there's so many different places that we go to for this information. And just like I mentioned in these manuals, it's like there's things that can give you a point in the right direction. But there's such a simplicity to coming back, you know, to the original source, to the original spot where, where, you know, it's just a basic understanding that we have the truth in front of us. We just need to, you need to make a decision to go there. And you know as well as I do, I can get as many books that refer to this book, just like sort of like the Volkswagen thing. You know, I have other books. I have a bookshelf here behind me that's that's full of books. You know, books that can can encourage us and can lead us and maybe help us in our studies. There's also, you know, large books with complete studies of the Word of God that lead us through it and take th- those are good things. Those are good things that you can use. But my encouragement to you is this, those do not take the place of the Word of God. And so my challenge is this, you know, get the Bible in your hands. Like in this time of uneasiness, like in anxiousness, everything that's going on, everything that is pulling us every which way, and it's like, we have, we have the instruction manual right here. We have a place where we can go and we can hear the very words that can be an encouragement, um, the early part of the chapter 12, it says, Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. What was the joy set before Jesus Christ? He did not remain in the grave. I am very hopeful that in a few weeks we can we can gather again and we can celebrate Easter together. Easter, you know, for us, for the Christian, that's the celebration of our faith the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the hope that we live in. That's the joy that we live in. Um, You know, doom and gloom is the cycling out of worst case scenario. And man, I hope that you're not going down that path because through Jesus Christ, we already have the best case scenario. Did you hear what the joy was set before that says, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. If you're a believer listening to this today, that's the hope we have in Jesus Christ. We're going to stand one day in the glory of God. That That's what, like us dying is a temporary thing. Just like Jesus going down in the grave was a temporary thing. We will be raised to new life in Jesus Christ. And that's awesome. That's exciting. Um, but it's not something we dwell on. It's not something we really fix our eyes on and think about all the time. And I will suggest to you the reason for that is because we have all these other sources. We have all these other things that are taking the place of that. There down in chapter 13, uh, I opened up with verse 5. It says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Are we content? with what we have. In our American culture, I would suggest to you, 
never. We're never satisfied. There's always the next level of contentment, right? If I have a little bit more in my bank account, my nest egg, if it was at this place, then I could be content. But, you know, that's not what brings fulfillment. That's not what brings satisfaction. We'll, we'll be found empty time and time again when we put our faith and our trust in anything but the Lord. We're putting our trust in temporary things. If my closet is full of toilet paper, I will be okay. You know, in the scheme of it, that that doesn't matter. Like that's such a, a minor thing. And yet we're, we're putting our faith in things that are temporary. Um, you know, it's interesting. It's almost like we have this idea that if we can just have those things and be and be you know sheltered, then we're going to be okay. If 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 the government could take care of this, or if the government could take care of me, or if I have enough supplies, then I'll be okay. But at the end of the day, those are not what satisfies. That's not what fills us up. It has to be the understanding that we have hope in Jesus Christ. I keep thinking about you know. Why, why do I have to fix up these old Volkswagens? Why is it that I have to go through these manuals and work on these old cars? Well, the reason is this. They're broken. They've been neglected. They're old. And they're broken down. And I keep thinking about our situation, you know. When things are going and running perfectly and smoothly and everything's going well with us, you know, our hope is in those things. Like it's taken care of us. We're provided for. Nothing to worry about. Everything, Everything's here for us. It's there for the taking. And we start to put our hope in those things. We start to trust those things, material things, money, um, whatever it might be, like our food storage. That's what we're putting our hope and our trust in. And those things are temporary. And so my encouragement to you is this, you know, the only hope, the only true hope is in Jesus Christ, because he not only protects us in life, but he protects us in death. Now, that's that's a hard thought. That's a deep thought, but think about it. All the way to the worst case scenario, end of the day, Christ will be with us and will be raised to new life in him. You know, that means that we need not fear death. Did you hear what he said? He said, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Christ has overcome. He has overcome. And that is, that is where our confidence lies. That's where we put our faith and our trust in. My, my only hope out of all of this is that some people actually realize they're broken. They are broken. We have turned and put our trust and our faith in something other than what we were supposed to. And I hope that this gives us an opportunity to sort of reset to reset and think about, you know, wait a second, where, where does my hope come from? What brings me content and peace and joy and happiness? And scriptures are full of it. You guys are, you guys are familiar with this. I'm sure you are. Philippians chapter four, verse four, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's directly, that's directly from the source. It's the words of life. And I hope that you have your Bibles open. I hope that your only source of information over these last few weeks has not just been, you know, the media or the latest feed or, you know, what somebody else is telling you. You know, you have the words of life. And you got to make a decision to go there. And so I hope that you're doing that. If you haven't been doing that, get your Bible out, you know, open it up, turn, flip through the pages, flip through the gospels. You will be encouraged. You will be lifted up to see the words of scripture. Therefore, I urge you brothers in, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as pleasing sacrifices. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, the words of the Bible 
are second to none. I can't get this from any other place. Now, I, I do hear it from other people. I hear it from teachers, from Pastor Matt, from other people in my life who speak the Word of God. I'm thankful for that. But do you know, even that, it pales in comparison to when I go to that manual myself, when I pick it up and I look at it, and I see what God has for me in that. So uh, young people and anyone alike, just you know, get in the Word. Go back to the source. Go back to where God can speak to you directly, and He can bring you that peace through His Word today. Um, I hope that we can meet again. Uh, I tell you, for me, the, 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 one of the biggest things that I've been missing is the opportunity to worship together. I just love to lead worship and to be a part of that. So uh, just encourage you uh, even more so, you know, play, play the worship songs on, on your videos or different places where you can worship the Lord, and, and don't neglect to do that. Uh, we need to be uh, still taking time to praise the Lord. So um, I hope you all have a great week, and I hope to see you real soon. Take care.